Hello and welcome back to Ride Rescue. Well, if you're like me, you're uh, you're cooped up and confined, uh, sheltering in. For those that are hunkered down, just stay safe. Uh, I, I hope the majority of us can avoid this virus as much as possible. In this video, I want to start doing body work on this. There's really only two places that need any body work. Dent-wise, rust-wise, there's a, a, an old patch here that is failed and is blistering, and there's a dent in this panel on that other side. It's just a really minor dent. I'm hoping I can I can heat that up with a heat gun and just massage it a little bit and work that dent out. First thing I need to do then is to take this fender off. My original thought I was just going to pop the bottom of the fender out a little bit and just kick it out and do the work. But since that fan motor is hidden in here and that fan motor is squealing, uh, I talked to the owner and he agrees it makes sense to just pull this fender off, replace that fan motor, and do this work on a bench where I can have easier access to it without sitting on the ground. So in order to get this fender off, I want to lift the car up and take all the bolts and everything out. I want to leave it up on jack stands. And one thing with a convertible, if I put the, the car up on jack stands and I support it from the chassis somewhere beyond the wheels, there's enough flex in the body that when I put this fender back on, I might not get it back exactly right. And then once I lower it down off the jack stands, the gaps and stuff aren't right. So I guarantee getting everything to stay put when I put it back together, I'll put the jack stands under each axle. So I'll put it under the lower control arm on the front, put it under the drive axle on the back, and then I will be able to make sure there's no flex in the body. I ran the batteries dead. It may not seem like a whole lot. Uh, it was only about two, two and a half hours, but uh, when I was trying to get it all on um, recording, it was just too much. So I'll just kind of do a quick rundown. You can see what I've done here. Uh, in order to take this fender off, the hood hinge is mounted to the fender. I didn't want to lose the adjustment on, on this side. <laughs> of the hood hinge because that is so difficult to adjust and get the, the height fitting here correctly when it's closed. Uh, I didn't want to take the hood off and then have to mess with that either. Um, it's bulky and I'm working alone so that's difficult. What I did is I rigged up this uh, fiberglass pole uh, that I put underneath the edge of the hood. Um, that hinge is just strong enough to hold the hood up but I really don't want to risk it anymore. I'll go ahead and prop this foot up and make sure that it can't slide into that cowl and chew the cowl all up. And here is the fan motor that I was talking about. This fan is literally inside of the hood. I mean, the hinge is here and the fender well liner is here. So there's no way you can get in and replace this fan motor without taking the fender off. So. I was hoping to leave the fender well in place. I took off all the bolts around the lip, took off all the trim, and then I had to take out the grill and the bumper and the headlight and all the assembly that holds that in. Uh, as you can see, the cocktail shaker that was sitting here in this corner, that had to come out. 
the battery tray, the battery brackets. You can see all the bolts that I'm just dropping on the floor and working as quickly as possible. So now you can see the area where that patch panel has failed. Um, I was thinking back on this. I was thinking I did this repair. And now I'm remembering that Ron Wagner at Ron's Body Shop did this for me when he painted it maroon. Because uh, I, I had him do the bodywork and the paint on it the first time around. And he replaced this rear quarter panel on the car because it had rust damage. That rear quarter panel was replaced at the dealership um, when it was just a few months old. And the front fender on the driver's side, I had replaced. Uh, I had a 69 Camaro green one that was hit real hard on the driver's side that I restored. And then it ended up being rear-ended. So I used the front fender off of my green car that was totaled for this front fender. So that is a GM fender. Uh, this one rear fender is GM. The other rear fender was GM. This is the original fender that was on the car from the factory. So as I said, Ron did this patch and he's a lead guy. And as I'm looking around this, he, he did a really good edge here. He didn't do that great along the bottom. He just wrapped that metal piece down around the bottom. And then from what I can tell, this is lead. So I'm gonna have to put on my hazmat gear so I don't get lead poisoning. Now I'm going to have to grind all this area out as much as possible. Uh, I was tempted to heat it up and let it flow out. I might still do that. So in, in order to try to preserve as much of this paint as possible and not damage anything, I went ahead and bolted the fender down to uh, a couple of stands. And then I'll be able to keep it from moving around while I do this repair work. Well, I'm going to put on all my hazmat gear just in case this is lead, which I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, yep, it's lead. It's pretty thick lead too. I'm probably going to have to heat it up and scrape it out. I hate to badmouth an old friend. <laughs> May he rest in peace. He's been dead a few years now. Uh, he, he may be laughing now with me. There is a huge, huge low spot right here <laughs> that was just clear full of filler. So obviously when he was letting this area, it got hot and just warped and really went down. And then he just filled it with filler. So right now, it looks like there is a big area of lead right here. I'll heat this up and try to get it out so that I don't end up with uh, lead dust everywhere. Okay, that one's just taking too long. I'm not getting it hot enough. I have to admit, I am shocked 
and how bad this is. I did not expect this. It looks like he probably welded this with a um, oxycetylene weld rather than a, a MIG or TIG weld. Uh, there's some brass welding where it popped all along here. It's not even welded and the weld didn't secure. So it, it split. And once it got moisture in between it, then it split all the way up. I'm going to have to cut it back quite a ways and then I'm probably going to have to section it. It's stretched so bad from getting it so hot in order to, to weld it the way you did as well as to, to let it. Yeah, this, this is pretty disappointing. You can see how thick the weld is or how thick that lead is. Probably an eighth of an inch thick, and that's even after some of it was ground away. I'm going to have to be really careful now. I'm getting way up in here where I'm going to have to use filler to be able to get this all smooth. I really don't want to get all the way up into where this emblem is, but I, I most likely will. I, I'll probably have to come all the way up here to this body line with my blending on the paint. That was my worst case scenario. And this is worse <laughs> than I thought. Worst case scenario. All right, no sense in crying over spilt milk. Let's get out the grinder and start cutting this out. Get to work. <laughs> Check out that pile of lead on the floor. That's just some of it. Back in the 70s, early 80s, um, I saw this a lot. Um, I thought he had welded this with metal rod, but you can see the, the copper brass look. So he brazed this piece in with an overlap. Uh, the problem with brazing, now well, there's two problems. One, the moisture gets between the panels and the brazing is not strong enough to hold back the rust from just popping it. So that's what started it. And then the lead just kind of held it together and bulged as it rusted and swelled more. But the other problem with brazing rod is, is the next guy. So the, when this patch panel was done, it was done with the idea of just get it done fast and easy, fill over it with lead or with filler, and be done with it. Well, the problem is, is when you have a car like this that has a longevity that could go a hundred years, uh, as long as it's not wrecked, and somebody else down the line, like me now, is having to repair this. Well, not only is that not a good solid weld, but now the metal is contaminated with brass. So along here where it's been brazed, I'm going to have to make sure to get rid of all the remnants of brass in that metal. And I may have to make a whole new lip here to get rid of that brass. Otherwise, my weld is just not going to bond. It's going to crack and, and blister and bubble and it'll be full of holes. And it's just not going to be a really good weld. So this is something that I thought about when I used to do it. What about the next guy? Well, I didn't do this weld, but I did some like it. And now I'm the next guy.